What's up developers and welcome back to a new short video where we will be diving into eloquent model conventions. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. We've already touched on eloquent a bit, but let me repeat myself one more time. Laravel's most important feature is Eloquent, which is an active record optional relational mapper, which helps you to make interacting with your database a lot easier. Active record means that a single Eloquent class is responsible for not only providing the ability to interact with a table, but also with one table row. We've also covered the Query Builder, and we won't be using the Query Builder in this course anymore, because we're mainly going to focus on Eloquent to interact with the database. Whenever you want to make use of Eloquent, interaction goes through the model. At the moment, we've got one post model class right inside of our models folder called post. Now, if you don't have a model right now, you can simply navigate to the CLI and perform the PHP artisan make colon model command, where you need to pass in one parameter, which is the model name. In our case, it will be post. I'm not gonna hit enter, so let me remove it, navigate back to Visual Studio Code, and right inside of our post.php class, so basically our post model, you'll find a pretty straightforward class called post, which is extending the default model. When we defined our model, we've created it with the migration flag, which automatically detects which table belongs to our model. Don't worry if you have created a separate model, because Laravel understands that a model in most cases belongs to a table. So it will check for your model name, in our case it will be post, it will snake case it, and in case it needs it, it will pluralize it, and it will search for the right table. If it for some reason doesn't work for you, and you want to tell your post model to interact with a different table, you simply got to create a new property right below your use statement, with an access modifier of protected, with the name of table. Now the value will be a string, and inside a string we need to define the table name. In our case, it will be posts. Keep in mind that this is all optional, I'm simply showing you how you could change it inside your model. Now Laravel also assumes that the ID, let's open our database migration, and the post table right here, the ID that has been defined by default inside your migration, will be the primary key of your table. Now inside your model, you can also change your primary key. It can simply be done inside a post model, right below our property, let's define a new one, called primary key and the value is equal to a string as well but it needs to be a column name that should represent your primary key so let's say that for some reason we want to set the primary key equal to our string title what we need to do is to simply pass in title right here now this isn't something that we will be needing so let's comment it out and let's actually comment out our protected table as well Next to the default ID that we will be adding to our migration, we've also got our timestamps right here, which will define the created at and the updated at columns. Instead of deleting the columns, Laravel allows you to disable them through a new property. So let's define that. Let's say protected, timestamps. And here we need to simply set the value equal to false. Now keep in mind, the default value is always true. You could also customize the format of your timestamps that are being added inside the database through the date format property. So let's define that. Let's say protected variable date time is equal to a string. Now the value that we're going to pass inside the string will be parsed to the PHP date function that you most likely have used before, where you could simply add certain characters that represent a way data is being added inside your column. Now we could say that we want to store a capital U which means that we will only store the seconds of our timestamps. Now let's comment out at both rows again. All right. Now we've defined our database connection driver inside our comic file and our .env file. Now let's say that you're using multiple drivers and you want to use a specific driver for a specific model. This can be done right here as well. We simply need to say protected connection is equal to the database connection that you want to use specifically for your post model. So let's say that we want to use SQLite. The power of databases is the fact that users can add values for every single column. But there might be a chance where you simply want to set a default value for a column. This can be done inside a migration where you can simply change the default method to it. Let's test that out. So right here, 
We've got this for our minutes to read where we set that the default is equal to one. Now let's say that we want a default for our is published, which is always true by default. What we can do is to define a new property called protected dollar sign attributes, which is equal to an array. Now let's go inside the array and hit enter. Right here, we got to define a key value pair. The key will be the column name, which in our case will be is underscore published, while the value is equal to true. Now this was it for some default model settings that you could adjust. Let me actually comment it out real quick. All right. This was it for this video where we dived into eloquent model conventions. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.